So, um, the, the, I think that this is the first of three part of tutorial, but the first part doesn't mention it, we'll just uh, work through it. It says, reflecting from step up potential. Okay. Um, it says, following a tutorial for solving Schrodinger equation. So, uh, let me just start by sketching things out. So, question nine. A Schrodinger equation for the following potential. Let me sketch the potential. So I guess I want to put x equals zero somewhere reasonably in the middle. And the potential function looks like a zero for the negative axis. And then at x equals zero, it suddenly jumps up to a value of uh, a constant value u naught. Okay, uh, where u naught is positive constant. Um, yeah, let, think of this left half the barrier. Follow this pot tutorial to derive the reflectance of instant particles of energy E greater than u naught. Okay, that's good to note. Let me just draw a line to indicate the energy of the instant particles. And answer some conceptual questions. Uh, for the region x less than zero, the Schrodinger equation takes the form, uh, right, uh, it's, it's been solved for the second derivative and the potential is zero. Okay. The second order ordinary differential equation has two linearly independent solutions. Yeah, so if uh, I had to find a solution to um, an equation that looks like this, you know, second order derivative, is equal to, uh, let me use a constant k to represent this. Minus k psi of x, uh, actually, sorry, k squared <laughs> psi of x. Then um, I would uh, stare at this for a while and immediately come up with this, uh, uh, sol or guess, this is a solution that I have seen, I have used in other contexts before, which is this general solution, psi of x, is equal to some integration constant times exponential of plus i k x plus b times an uh, integration constant exponential of i k oh sorry not i k minus i k x Equivalently, you can also write this in this form. It, this is a more of a, cho a taste or whatever. Uh, you can write an equivalent solution in this form. Psi of x is equal to some constant times uh, cosine of kx plus some another coefficient times sine of kx. Or actually, there's one other way to write it, uh, which would uh, look like uh, psi of x is equal to, uh, let me call it e, times cosine of kx plus v. Uh, because there's uh, so many different ways of writing solutions to general solutions to this particular differential equation. Uh, in the question text, I'm giving you enough descriptions to narrow down these possible forms of solutions into a particular one that can actually be graded. Um, so it's uh, saying, okay, where necessary, use the value of zero or one for integration constant. Okay, so whatever I do, I, I'm gonna end up with a, something like A is equal to B is equal to C is equal to D is equal to E is equal to one. So I'm not gonna bring up those constants. Um, and then here it says general solution with positive value of momentum. And this is where it helps to remember the momentum operator. Momentum operator is um, minus i times h bar times the derivative with respect to position. And this is where any of these real functions real sinusoidal functions will not fulfill this role because when you take the derivative you don't get the same function back so it's not a momentum eigenstate only this form of solution the, with the complex exponentials 
will fit this description. So when you imagine taking the value of momentum out of these solutions, you'll find that this is the positive momentum and this gives you the negative momentum. And uh, by plugging this into this expression here, you can figure out that this coefficient here, k squared, is equal to uh, 2me over h bar squared. So, um, so you take the square root to get k is equal to uh, square root of 2me over h bar squared. So with that, I have I think I have enough information to write in uh, what the general solution with the positive value of momentum is. It's exponential of um, plus i times the k, which would be square root of 2me. And if I want you to, I can just put h bar outside of the square root. Be h over 2 pi. Okay, oh, and I need to multiply this by x. So this is the general solution with the positive value of momentum. And the general solution with the negative value of momentum is exactly the same, except for the minus sign in front of imaginary i. Oops, minus. Okay, uh, I'll submit that along with the next one. It says, um, for the region x greater than zero uh, on the right hand side, the Schrodinger equation takes the form this. And, oh, yeah. And, you know, if you carefully compare A and B, really nothing much, much has changed because E was positive and E minus unit is also positive. So, in terms of qualitative features of solution, nothing much has changed. So when you write down the solution with the positive value of momentum, oh, that's just going to be basically this solution with E replaced by E minus U naught. So let me do that. Minus U naught. Okay. And hopefully there's a way to, yeah. If you don't know how to type in U naught this way, then there's the, the equation palette. All right, let me submit this and see. Okay. Okay, so, so yeah, um, correct answers. Yeah, so those are the general forms of the solution. And this is where it's getting at. With above results, our general solution to the Schrodinger equation is this form of solution where you've written down psi one and psi two, uh, both in terms of positive and negative momentum. So, um, yeah, that, that's the general solution. We have that, um, at least uh, we don't have it written down, but we know what that will be if I need to write it down anywhere. So now it says we need to determine the coefficient A, B, and C to find the particular solution. We do this by applying the two boundary conditions that the wave function is continuous so this is one of the equations we'll be writing down and the derivative of the wave function is continuous um, then, then, then you know this is uh, uh, something that applies in other cases not this particular case so um, so this is the expression that will apply and it says applying the boundary conditions result in a system of algebraic equations involving coefficients a, b, and c, and other parameters. In order to save a little bit of writing, use the following constants to simplify the other co given constants in your expressions. I think k1 is already um, what I was using as k, and k2 will be uh, well what I can use for uh, in region two. So. Let me write in, so this is region 1, and this is region 2. Okay, and yeah, and in part C, it's calling for the ratios B over A and C over A. And this is because, um, so this is covered in the lecture, and uh, this is how it boils down to. When we write down our boundary condition equations, we have two equations, but we have three unknowns, A, B, and C. So we cannot eliminate all of them. 
And in fact, the choice we make is to express the other coefficients as in units of A, so that that's the way to get to uh, reflectivity or reflectance. So, so let's go through the steps here. I need to apply the boundary condition. So let me uh, first write down our general solution so that I have something to refer to. So let me write down my wave function. Um, psi of x is equal to, uh, depending on the value of x, if x is negative, then it's going to be a times uh, e to d, and using the coefficient defined for us, e to the plus i k one x plus b times e to the minus i still k one x. Uh, this is for x less than zero, and for positive values of x, it'll be c times e to the plus i, I have to be careful here, k2x. And we don't have left traveling solution because we are setting our initial condition so that particle is instant from left, okay, for x greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's my general solution. So let me uh, apply the boundary condition and write down the uh, forms of the, the, the algebraic system of equation that results from applying the boundary condition. So, the boundary condition one is the continuity of the wave function. So, I end up saying at x equals zero, the uh, form of wave function on the negative side should equal the form of wave function on the positive side. So, I'm just going to plug in x equals zero as I go. So, it'll be a times e to the i k one times zero. So, e to the zero is going to be one. So it's just going to be a times 1 plus b times, oh, that's going to be 1 again. So, all right, let me just make this simpler. So it's going to be a plus b is equal to the right-hand side will be c, c times e to the 0 or 1. Okay, that's the uh, first equation, simple enough. For the second um Okay, so I'm going to do two things at the same time in my head, just saying it out loud. So I need to take the derivative and then plug in value of x equals 0 for the second boundary condition. And because these are all exponentials, taking the derivative will be easy enough. So when I take the derivative first term, I get from the chain rule, the a factor of i k1 coming down. So it's going to be i k1 times a times e to the 0 or 1 plus for the second term oh it's going to bring down a factor of minus i k1 so let me get rid of this plus and just plug in minus i k1 b is equal to c um, taking the derivative here i get i k2 so i k2 c okay um so I, I think uh, um, I can simplify some things, uh, pre-simplify to make things a little bit easier. So I can cancel out i from every term in the second equation. So I get k1a minus k1b is equal to k2c. Okay. Um, so in trying to solve for b over a and c over a, I guess it's uh, simplest to divide out a. Then I get 1 plus b over a is equal to c over a. And here, uh, let me divide it out by k1a yeah, for fun. I think that's going to be fun. <laughs> 1 minus k1's cancel, so b over a is equal to uh, k2 divided by k1, k2 divided by k1, c over a. Um, all right, uh, I think here uh, is, <laughs> I see a bit of an easier way to solve for c over a, because uh, for c over a, I can do linear combination. I can take this whole thing, add it to the equation above, 
And if I do that, this is what I end up with. So 1 plus 1 gets me 2. b over a minus b over a gets me 0. So, well, 0 is equal to the right-hand side, c over a plus k2 over k1 c over a. Or factoring out c over a, it's 1 plus k2 over k1 c over a. So um, that gives me the answer of uh, c per a is equal to 2 divided by 1 plus k2 over k1. Seems simple enough. Let me plug that in. See what I get. Uh, 2 divided by 1 plus k2 over k1. Okay, let me see if that's the right answer. Good. It says it's right. So uh, what I now can do is I can actually solve one of the two equations for, for example, this equation for b over a. And um, and plug in c over a that I just solved for. That would be the quickest way to get an expression for b over a. And although there are two different ways to calculate b over a, I think they will end up giving you the same value anyway. So, so one way of getting at b over a is to solve for that here. So c over a minus one, c over a minus one. Okay, let's plug in c over a, that's uh, 2 over 1 plus k2 over k1 minus, and I can write 1 in, can I write it in an interesting way? Well, let, let me give it a try. So to try to write it in an interesting way, I can write it down as 1 plus k2 over k1 over 1 plus k2 over k1. That is a way of writing one. Same numerator, same denominator. And now uh, taking this difference here, I get on the numerator, 2 minus 1, so 1, and then minus k2 over k1. k2 over k1 over, on the denominator, 1 plus k2 over k1. Oh, I'll, I'll bet I can simplify it even more. I can multiply top and bottom by k1. And when I do, I'll get this. Uh, k1 minus k2 divided by k1 plus k2. I think I like the symmetry of this solution. So let me plug that in. I think there are other possible ways of writing this, but um, this will work. Let me plug that in. Uh, k1 minus k2 divided by k1 plus k2. Yeah, and I don't know if it would matter, but k1 is um, greater than k2, so this would be a positive coefficient. But I think in this particular case, negative coefficients are also allowed. So the fact that it's positive here, it might have some meaning, might not. Here, that's just a form I like. All right, I think that looks good enough. And it says above ratio are reflection coefficient and transmission coefficient. Uh, the reflectance defined as ratio of reflected density um, is given by this. Uh, calculate the numerical value of reflectance if E is uh, twice as U naught. So I'm just staring at this and trying to compare if E is twice U naught, then I think I can say this. Um, I can say that K1 will be square root of 2 times K2, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think that will all work out. So I think that's enough to calculate B over A squared. Let me do that on my calculator. Um, so, uh, I can kind of see that um, all the factors of, because I'm taking a ratio, let's say unit of k2 will cancel out. So I can just do k1 minus k2 as a square root of 2 minus 1, okay, that's a value, divided by square root of 2 plus 1. 
Okay, uh, I get, oh wait, that's just the ratio. I need to take the square of it uh, to get uh, what's wanted here. So take the square, 0 0.0294. Hmm, that seems rather small, but um, all right. And then what is the reflectance if E is equal to U naught? Um, if E is equal to U naught, well, K1 would be infinitely greater than K2. K2 would be zero. So this expression reduces to K1 over K1. So one. Oh. Yeah, I hope that makes a physical intuitive sense. Yeah. And you can kind of see from these two numbers plugged in how difference between E and U naught affect the um, effect of reflectivity. You can almost look at it this way. So the wave that's incident, it has some wavelength. And what happens when it hits the boundary is because the energy difference is now smaller, the kinetic energy less, so the wavelength gets longer. And what you are seeing is that the greater incident energy E is, the smaller, relatively speaking, this change is, so the less effect you get, less reflection you get. Um, but in the limit where this energy is barely above the potential energy, then this wavelength suddenly goes from something that was finite to something that's infinitely long. So it's like hitting a, a immovable brick wall. It bounces all day. So, so yeah, that's a reflection from a step potential. Probably the simplest possible case. The next two examples will be slightly more complicated.